I appreciate that opportunity, but to our friends online that couldn't join us uh, in the uh, cafeteria today or the cafe today, we say thank you for joining us. We look forward to one day when you can join us here at Epworth Fellow. Um, I have some remarks prepared and some are going to be just extemporaneous, but let me just start by asking this very important question. If you came today thinking that you were going to get a sales presentation, you will not be disappointed. <laughs> but I will make that sales presentation at the end of my comments. And I'll tell you when it's coming so you can use the restroom, you can look down, check your messages on your phone, whatever. So between now and the time when I tell you the sales presentation begins, I'm gonna to talk to you as factually and quickly as I can uh, about senior living, the different kinds of senior living, the history of senior living, what it means to live in a, live in a senior living community today. Now, I noticed that many of you have these uh, snazzy pads and pens that we're trying to bribe you with. Uh, and so for or those of you that want to take notes, um, We've provided that information, that opportunity, uh, as we go forward. So let's start with just almost um, a description of who we are as humans. As humans, we are hardwired for certainty. We want to know what's going to happen. We want, some of you called and said, what's for lunch? I want to know if I'm going to like it. Some of you checked the weather three or four times before you got in the car. We are hardwired for certainty. It's, it's in us. It's part of us. It is just a, a natural event of being human. Because we're hardwired for certainty, and people that are hardwired for certainty tend to be planners because they want to make sure that they can control the future or control what they can of the future. So there's a high correlation between certainty and people that are planners. There's a high correlation of people that are planners that want to avoid risk in their lives. And there's a high correlation of people that want to avoid risk to the purchase of insurance products. So follow the bouncing ball. We go from what desiring certainty, correlation to planners, planners correlation to risk aversion, risk aversion correlation to insurance products. So this is now the audience participation portion of our program. All you have to do is raise your hand. How many of you here have homeowner's insurance, automobile insurance, life insurance, health insurance, long-term care insurance, identity theft insurance, disability insurance, li excess liability insurance. Who bought, the ho who bought the homeowner's warranty on your, on your house? Who bought the extended warranty on your car? What are you trying to do what is all those what do all those insurance products give you peace of mind it gives you certainty that when something really goes wrong you've got a best chance to have it covered now unfortunately insurance is a product that only is useful when something goes wrong but that's why we have it because we seek certainty now, one more, a couple more questions, and then we'll move on. So basically, we have a group of planners here, risk-averse planners. Most of you raise your hands multiple, multiple times during that questionnaire period. How many here have plans to move into a senior living community? Okay, 
good number of you. For those of you that don't, how many of you, of you here have plans to move in with your kids? Hmm, not a hand. Interesting. Why is that? Well, a lot of reasons, but probably, not selfishly, but generously, you don't want to be a burden to them. You don't want to bother your kids with those issues that we face at this phase of life. Now watch this one. How many here, by a raise of hands, helped and participated in the advanced age care of a mom, dad, aunt, uncle, brother, cousin, sister, nephew? So we'll do it ourselves, but we don't want it for somebody else because we want to be certain of our future. So as we go through this process today, I want to be sure that um, if you have questions, you can save them till the end or you can ask them as we go through this, but we will have questions and answer at the end if, you'd like, if, you, if you want to do it that way. So here's the next piece of this story. Planners by and large choose to live in senior living because it provides them with certainty and predictability. But there are so many different kinds of senior living, it's hard to choose. Now remember, this is not the sales presentation, this is just facts. So, you have a lot of really good senior living options here in Greater Oklahoma City. A lot of good ones. And I'm an advocate for senior living. So if Epworth Villa is not for you, look around. You might find something you really like. Because I just really believe it's the right thing for people to do. And it's a good decision. Senior living is a good decision. Where you move is the decision that you have to evaluate for yourself. So there's all kinds of senior living communities. There's the kind where they just provide housing and no services and no activities, but it's a nice place to live. There are rental communities that have housing and some services. Then there are the kind that have multiple different levels of living. Those are called continuing care communities or life plan communities. So a life plan community typically has three or more, <clears throat> more levels of living. So as an example, here at Epworth Villa, we have about five, maybe six. So there are garden homes and cottages and independent living apartments and assisted living and memory care and skilled nursing and hospice. So you can enter at any point that you want, but as needs change, you've got it covered. It provides you with certainty in the face of what the future might be. So these life plan communities tend to be the Cadillac of senior living options. They tend to be the most desirable. And I'll talk to you about the price of what it is to move into Epworth Villa in a little bit. And that's not the sales presentation, that's just gonna be factual. So I wanna give you a bit of a history about this because it creates uh, an interesting dynamic that tells you where aging in the United States is going. So this life plan community concept was started in California, oh, about, hundred or more years ago. California was still pretty um, new a hundred years ago in terms of its population, in terms of its growth. And so the first life plan communities were started there about a hundred years ago and then the popularity jumped from California to an East Coast state where there are more senior life plan senior living communities than any other state in the United States 
And what state do you suppose that is? Florida. Not Florida. Oh. Go to work. <laughs> Say it again, New York? No. Any other guesses? It's Pennsylvania. Why is it Pennsylvania? Because the piece of information that I didn't tell you is this was all started by the Quakers. So where are there large concentrations of Quakers? In Southern California and Pennsylvania. You're getting, you're getting this map handed out now that tells that story very specifically. It gives you the information. And if you look at this map, you can see how the aging of the United States patterns how long states have been. And the, the, and the number of um, life plan communities patterns the aging as we move east to west across the country. I'm sure your eyes all went to Oklahoma, and you can see that there are 21 in Oklahoma, a good number. It's the concept of life plan communities that is so solid and so proven. The 100 years gives us lots of information about how this whole business model works, about what happens over the course of good times in the economy and bad times in the economy, about what happens in times of stress and times of calm. It tells us a lot about what we know about senior living today. So life plan communities, being the Cadillac, are those that have different levels of living and you move through them as needed. Now, with that being said, life plan communities are different than most others in that you pay two fees. There are two charges to move into life plan communities and there's two charges to move here into Epworth Villa. One is an entrance fee. And the entrance fee is paid one time on the day you move in and one time only. It's based on the size and the style of the apartment that you choose or garden home or cottage, whatever, whatever size uh, apartment or uh, residential choice you make. And it has different options depending on person's finances. So that's a very obtuse statement for what I'm about to say and oversimplify. There's entrance fees here at Epworth Villa that start a little under $60,000 and go to a little over $600,000. You pay that one time, one time only, based on the size and the style of the apartment you choose. Most people, the super majority of people that live here and live in all these life plan communities, sell their house, take the net proceeds of the house, pay the entrance fee, and that's how they make that payment. And it works just like your house. So when you, if you were to go out and sell your house today in this really great market, you list that house for X dollars, you're gonna get about 90% of that number net. After you pay the brokers and you pay the title insurance and you pay the settlement costs, you get about 90% of that number net. That's exactly how this works. So if you choose a two bedroom, two bath apartment on the second floor facing Southwest with the cream color carpet and it's $400,000, 90% of that $400,000 is refunded to you or your estate, no matter how long you live here, no matter how much health care you use. 90% of that money is refunded to you, just like the house. That's the entrance fee piece. Now I'll talk about what that gets you in just a minute. This isn't a sales presentation, these are just facts. 
you pay a monthly fee. Each month that you live here, you pay a monthly fee. It's based on the size and the style of the apartment that you choose. You pay, if there's one of you, you pay one monthly service fee. If there's two of you, you pay a second person monthly service fee that's a lot less money, and no, you cannot all be second people. <laughs> so the monthly service fee is based on the size and the style of the apartment that you choose. You can live here for a little bit over $2,000 a month on the low end, and you can live here for a little over $8,000 a month at the high end. depending on the size and the style of apartment that you choose. The range of size of those apartments from a studio apartment to a big Mamma Jamma Gold Coast gucci up garden home is about a little under 500 square feet to a little over about 2,500 square feet. You have to look at all of them and see which one fits yours best. Now you're all pretty smart people, so you can kind of align this up in your head and figure out, well, if you marry up that low monthly service fee and that low entrance fee, and you marry up that high monthly service fee and that high uh, entrance fee, you can kind of see the price range and sizes and style of all the offerings we have. Now what you get for that takes a whole lot of effort. And that's why we have those happy peppy bursting with love sales counselors back there to explain it to you. But I want to give you a very brief overview. You get meals, maids, linens, transportation, security, utilities, activities, property taxes, insurance, and long-term care. Would you like that faster? There's a lot. And that's why I could spend the rest of the afternoon talking about this, but we don't have that kind of time. But you get a very comprehensive package of services just for you. Sidebar, just a minute. You are eligible. Now, now, now a long time ago, once a long time ago, the United States Congress did something really good. That wasn't political, that was a joke, come on. <laughs> and what they did was they passed a law that said for those persons living in life plan communities are eligible for certain tax deductions. So there's a range of tax deductions that you are can receive for living here. The entrance fee, the one-time fee that you pay based on the size and the style of the apartment you choose, you can get from 10 to 40 percent of that number tax deductible in one year, the first year that you live here, only. Each month that you live here, for as long as you live here, you can get about 20 to 25 percent of every month's monthly fee as a tax deduction. And there's exclusions and there's this and there's that. If you're all tax preparers, then you'll, you'll know what I'm talking about. But it's an advantage. It's not a reason to move here. It's not the reason to move here. It's just another interesting bullet point advantage. Now, you pay all these fees. You know you get meals. You know you get all the other stuff. But wait, there's more. <laughs> You get four really important things. Four really important things. Number one, you get lifetime use of the apartment or garden home or cottage, the commons, activities, the assisted living, the memory care, and the skilled care. Lifetime use of all those things. Number two, you get estate preservation. So remember I said 90% of the money you pay in is refunded to you when you leave 
or your estate. So it preserves your estate, keeps you insured against high costs of long-term care. It also provides you with predictable monthly service fees. And predictable costs over time. So will the monthly service fee go up? Yep. Going to go up every year. It's going to go up three and a half, four percent every year. Just facts of life. You get a good chef, you got to pay him more. You all know what's happening to utilities, you all know what's happening to insurance, you all know what's happening to this stuff. We'll talk about that in a minute. But that monthly service fee is going up every year, three and a half, four percent. So you get lifetime use of all the building, the levels of living. You get estate preservation in the form of refundability of that 90% of your entrance fee and predictable costs. You get priority access to the exclusion of others to high quality, private, long-term care. Assisted living, memory support, skilled. I want you to think about it like this. Those things are like the airbag in your car. You don't have to see them. They're down there. But when something bad happens, it pops out and saves your life. And that's how this works. It's also another important thing. It is care you know by people that know you. So you start over here in a garden home or a patio home or a apartment. Needs change, choose to move. That process is smooth. You know what it is, it's predictable. You know how it works, it's certain. And then once you get there, they know exactly who you are. They know who your friends are, your family your doctor, everything. So it's care you know by people that know you. And the last one, should you ever run out of money, you'll never be asked to leave. So you get lifetime use of all the different levels of living, estate preservation in terms of the refund of the entrance fee, Predictable monthly costs. You get priority access to high quality, private, long-term care. Should you ever run out of money, you'll never be asked to leave. Four very important things when you're trying to seek certainty in your life. Now, thinking about this, if I were you, I'd be thinking, well, how do I know all this works for me? What do I have to evaluate to make sure that this is something that creates value other than the things I've talked about? So there are really four things I want to make you aware of. Number one, this is a highly regulated business. Of all these life plan communities that you have the map up here, 90% of them are not for profits. Most of them, many of them, religiously affiliated, not for profits. It is a highly regulated business. People don't go into senior living to make a big profit because it's not there. So you have to have a mission and you have to have a, you have to do this electively. Highly regulated business. I'm not sure exactly here at Epworth, but in other communities and other cities the size of Oklahoma City, there are up to 19 different agencies 
or regulatory agencies that have dominion and domain over the daily operations of this place. So somebody's watching over the shoulders all the time, making sure that things are working right. Highly regulated business. Communities like this are required to have reserves. Reserves are built by occupancy and reserves are held in escrow. They have to be invested in treasury bills. You can't go buy hog futures or Bitcoin or um, you know Microsoft stock. You have to invest it in government rated securities. Those reserves are held to meet the obligations of the community and the contracts that the people that live here hold for services. Highly regulated industry, big reserves, Sorry. and reputation. So Epworthville's been here a long time. It'll be here a long time in the future. It's got a reputation to uphold, provide good services, honor the contracts, be part of the community. That's a very important thing in your evaluation. And the last one is, interestingly enough, what's happening in the United States today? So go to church, go to the mall, go to the grocery store, go to the Starbucks, go to anywhere out in public, and who do you see? More people just like you. There's a tremendously growing aging population in the United States. And when the baby boomers get involved in this, there may even be baby boomers here, that wave of people is going to make sure that every one of these places is chock-a-block full. So you kind of have to think all this through in your head. Do I feel comfortable about making a decision with all these factors rolling around? And I'm throwing all this at you pretty fast, but that's why we have highly trained people that will deal with you and talk with you confidentially in this process. Now, just a couple other things, and that is, what is the biggest liability you face today? Is it a bad health care episode? Probably not. Is it a car wreck? Probably not. It's that house you live in. You can't control the costs. You know what's happening. You've seen it in the bills. It's going to continue. Sometimes there's physical issues in that house that create a threat or a danger that are not, that need to be addressed. And think about this one. Go home, root around in the safety deposit back box under the mattress, uh, wherever you might keep it, pull out the deed to that house and look at it, and you can read it, it's all full of fancy words. Nowhere in that deed will that house tell you you're gonna get 90% of its value back when you choose or die. Nowhere in that deed does it say, if you run out of money, you'll never be asked to leave. Nowhere in that deed, if you look out the back, look out the kitchen window in the backyard, is there an assisted living center out there? Memory, memory care center over there? Uh, no. Skilled nursing? No. Hospice? No, don't see that.
Think about that. And let me tell you exactly what's going to happen to you this afternoon, maybe in about an hour. I can predict with absolute certainty what's going to happen. You leave here, met some new people, saw some old friends. Yeah, that guy talked about some interesting stuff. You walk in the back door and you're going to go, oh gosh, we could never leave here. This place is just perfect. All our memories. We just, we just, we just got to, we just, we, you know, we'll, we'll, we're just not ready yet. We're, it's, it's coming, but just not now. We're so happy here. So when that happens to you, and it will, I want you to ask yourself this question. Does the next five years of your life look like the last five years? And if you're honest with yourself, the answer is no. And if you're a planner and a risk avoider and a thinker, this is going to get some more traction in your head. So before I give you the sales presentation, I've got two more stories that I want to tell you. One's a little hypothetical, but fun. And the other one ends with a piece of perfect truth. So, any Trekkies here? Any Star Trek fans? Okay, got some Star Trek fans, good. So, all of you that are probably remember that television show with Dr. Spock and Captain Kirk and Lieutenant O'Hara, and they could teletransport themselves anywhere they wanted. They had a little doodad on their uniform. They could pop that thing and beam me up, Scotty. Remember that? And Scotty would press a magic button and all magic, all of a sudden the, their bodies would decompose and they would be reconfigured or reionized, whatever, at wherever they were intended to go. So we're going to pretend we're all in Star Trek right now. And we're going to pick at random one community off this map. I don't care where it is. If it's in Tucson, Arizona, which sounds pretty good today. <laughs> Florida, Waterloo, Iowa, Detroit, Michigan, Seattle, Washington. We're going to pick one. We're all going together. We're going to hit there, and we've now been teletransported to the lobby, the front entrance of that community somewhere, USA. Now, we're going to pick at random an apartment, cottage, garden, home, don't care. Don't care what floor, don't care. We're going to go knock on the door. And I can tell you with absolute certainty what that person who answers the door will say. And he or she will say, I should have done it sooner. It's a wonderful life. I never had so much freedom and peace. Now the next story starts with a little bit of fun. I got two stories. We're going to go for two stories. You all remember Jackie Gleason? Yeah. Big portly guy and made fun, fun of his size a lot as part of his jocular stick. And he was an MC. Before, before TV picked him up in the 1950s, he was an MC um, at nightclubs in New York. And we'd introduce the shows and carry on the dinner theater and do all kinds of other stuff. And in this um, 
world, he had some really fancy clothes. They really tricked him up. He had all kinds of tuxedos and, and all kinds of colored uh, suits that he would wear in this role as the MC at these dinner clubs and nightclubs. And when he hit it big on TV, he signed a contract with CBS. I don't remember what year, but it had to be late 40s, early 50s, because that show ran for a long time. And he hit it big, and all of a sudden, he had money, like he'd never had before. He'd been successful, but he'd never, all of a sudden, he had plenty of money. And he took an old trunk and took those fancy clothes that he had and put a $10 bill in every po pants pocket and every coat pocket and folded them up and put them in this trunk, added the mothballs, sealed the trunk, and shipped it to the dinner theater where he had worked last that said, Jackie Gleason, hold for, property of Jackie Gleason, hold for arrival. So they said, well, why, do you, why did you do that? He said, because I don't know if this TV thing's gonna last. And if I go back there, it's because I have nothing. And that trunk is my insurance. Because at least I'll have those suits and that much money. Last story. Before Jackie Gleason, how's that? In the 1930s, Ernest Hemingway, who was a famous author, drinker, <laughs> was sitting in a bar in Key West, Florida, where he lived at that time, doing what he did best, which was drink. Right. <laughs> A book. Now this is the 1930s, the Depression. Money was scarce, money was tight. At the other end of the bar, there's a couple guys and they've been overserved and they're having a big time over there. And all of a sudden they turn their attention to Ernest Hangway, who's minded his own business, sitting there at the bar, having a drink, writing. And these guys are getting on him like, hey, hey buddy, hey, hey, hey you, what are you doing? Ernest Hangway pays him no mind. Hey, what are you doing over there? I'm writing a book. What are you writing a book for? It's how I make money. Come on, this is the depression. Nobody can make any money by writing a book. What do you get paid for writing a book? He goes, well, I get paid about a dollar a word. These guys are like, what? So they root around in their pockets and they mess around and they come up with six dollars and they lay it on the table. Go, okay, write us a story. Here's Hemingway says, all right, picks up the six dollars because that'll buy a lot of liquor in the depression. <laughs> says, here's your six dollar story. For sale, baby shoes, Never worn. Where'd your mind go? Is the baby safe? Were the people so poor during the depression because they, they had to sell the baby shoes to get money to eat? We didn't have eBay. So a good story makes your mind work and creates wonder and creates interest and curiosity. So before I enter into the sales presentation, which is coming next, I noticed you left. You were ready for the sales presentation, weren't you? <laughs> I've tried to create a six word definition of what senior living is for the purposes of brevity and the purposes of understanding how you might think about it. And those six words 
are certainty, predictability, and a self-directed life. You are in charge. Certainty, predictability, a self-directed life. Now here, right now, coming at you, hard and fast, is the sales presentation, right now. Ready? Here we go. It is our great wish that you would invest about two hours of your time someday in the future at your convenience and join us here to sit down and talk about the lifestyle and the benefits and the costs of Epworth Villa. Very simply that. That's our sales presentation. Please come back. You're invited to visit. It takes about two hours of your time. After two hours, you're gonna know two things. One, this is not for me. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. I'm leaving. Okay, but you're gonna walk out the door informed. And when you see somebody at the grocery store, the country club, or the church social, and they go, I'm gonna go out there and look at that Upworth Villa, you can say, I, I know all about it. I spend a couple hours out there, I can tell you. It might be for you, it wasn't for us, but it might be for you. That was the first thing you're gonna find out. The second thing you're gonna find out is, wow, I need to know more. Because there's nothing, there's not one word that those people can say that's gonna make you say, oh gosh, uh, let's load up the trunk and come on over. That's not what this is about. This is a very deliberate decision that you have to make on an informed basis. So that's very simply our appeal and our sales presentation. Come visit us two hours at your convenience. I'm gonna stop talking. Thank you very much.